All right, guys, what's going on? Finally, another video here from Kyle's Cars. And right now, I am currently sitting in a 2016 Chevy Silverado. Things only got less than 20,000 miles. And uh, I just got this from uh, that little online dealership you guys might have heard of called Carvana. They got commercials on TV 24 hours a day ads all over the internet everywhere you look and seeing as i've had some dealings with rumble on which is kind of like the motorcycle version of carvana they're now doing cars as well i decided i'd try my luck with carvana see if they're a little bit easier to deal with and um i would say in some ways they're better and in some ways they're about the same so net benefit i guess but let me explain now I'm not gonna do the same thing. I, I looked at some other videos of people talking about Carvana and most of it was just stupid little gimmick stuff about them delivering the car or- <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> or them getting the car from the, uh, from the car vending machine, which is a total gimmick. So let's see what happens. I don't think that's what matters. That's like the 1% of the whole process, right? And the most important thing is putting your deal together and actually living with the car afterwards because you're going to be making three to seven years of payments on this thing. So, you know, are you actually going to be happy with the experience overall? Eleven says, Scotty, what do you think about getting a car from one of those car ramps? <laughs> I left my butt off on those. What I'll say right from the start is it is infinitely faster to get your car through Carvana. I have been a part of several dealership motor vehicle buying experiences in the last year or two. Um... I will say that typically my experience, both from a franchise dealer and an independent dealer, the process has run between five to 12 hours in and out. And 12 hours is way on the bad end of how long it can take. But I would say about six hours or so is a pretty good median number to say if you buy a car from a dealership financed, that's what it'll take you to get in and out with your car or more if it goes over two days. But um, six is a pretty good rough number. The total amount of time spent uh, on this was a total of three hours. And it was only three hours because of an issue, not because the actual process takes that long. That's, I would say... If Carvana could do everything perfect, if it were just a perfectly well-oiled machine, potentially you could be into this with about an hour of your time. Um, it took about 20 minutes to process all the paperwork after I figured out what vehicle I wanted um, on Carvana. Now, I had to go back and check about three or four different times before I finally found the truck I wanted. And I'm not going to review this particular truck. I just wanted to show you that I actually have it. Um, I'll make another video about the truck at another time. Um, but, you know, I had to go back and forth a couple times because I wanted something very specific. If I was going to have it for that much time, I needed to find something at a certain truck at a certain price. And that was the only way I was going to do it. Um, so after that, the actual... Filling everything out took about 20 minutes, setting everything up. Um, and then once the truck arrived, it took about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to deal with the guy delivering it and finalizing everything with him. So in theory, you could be all set with this in about an hour. And best part of it is, is you're all, you're doing it all from like wherever you want. You know, you could do it from your house, from your work, wherever. So an hour spent at home dealing with something is infinitely better 
than an hour spent elsewhere dealing with something, in my opinion. You know, you, you don't have to, you know, be in front of a bunch of people you don't know and all that. That's just my personal opinion. So those are the good things about it. Um, I'll also say that it seemed like their financing terms were a little bit easier than most dealerships. Um, the interest rate is pretty standard. Um, as far as down payments go, I was, you know, pretty much on par with most dealerships. I did get this truck for about three to five thousand dollars less than any truck like it was being sold pretty much anywhere else. Um, so that's a benefit, a huge benefit, really. I mean, it's all about the money at the end of it. Um, and the terms of this deal are really good because here's the thing. They know that you can't see the vehicle before you buy it, but they want to sell it to you anyway. So what they do is they give you the seven day test drive type of thing. So you have seven days and 400 miles to drive the thing to decide if you want to keep it permanently, which is great. So even though you don't get to see it before you buy it, and you know, you kind of like taking some small risk, they are making up for it by letting you, you know, change your mind within seven days. And that's awesome, man. You know, uh, that's the best thing about it. Um, now, here's the bad parts of it, okay? So I'm just gonna address the bad parts as, you know, in exceeding uh, order, right? So I wanted to just, I wanna just start with somebody in another video said, to do your test drive, you have to prove your insurance, which is correct. Um, I don't think that that's a bad thing, right? Because as a business owner, thinking about the liability of that, um, you know, you can't just let somebody take the, the vehicle for seven days on your business's insurance because you get one or two people wrecking these things and you're going to get dropped like a bad habit where your rates are going to go through the roof. Um, dealership insurance policies are already pretty high. Uh, I think, I don't think that's an unreasonable expectation. It's probably a stipulation that Carvana had with whoever insures them that they couldn't let people keep these things for days and days. Uh, so, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad. No, you can't drive without your own insurance, uh, during your seven day test drive, but you get a seven day test drive. Um, now if you decide not to keep it, you're only going to pay the insurance prorated for the days that you had the vehicle, um, which is also pretty fair. Uh, I guess it depends on what you pay in insurance, but like for, for me, it was just a matter of just adding it to insurance. So I didn't pay anything up front for the insurance um, that'll be billed at the end of the month. So if I change my mind, all that will happen is, is my regular insurance and then you just add some prorated amount for the days if I were to change my mind. So you know, that's not so bad. Now, if you have to pay $300 a month for full coverage insurance, that might be, you know, some significant number because, you know, it's $300 a month, divide that by four. But if you're only paying about a hundred a month, which is what this is, um, you know, seven days is, you know, a burger. It's like, whatever. I'd rather take that risk personally. Um, so I don't, I don't really think it's, I think it's pr pretty neutral on in the insurance thing. Um, and then, the worst of it really was the the logistics of actually making this work. So the thing about it is, is Carvana doesn't have a dealer's license in every single state. It's just not possible. And I speculated in another video about how they must be selling cars all over the country. And now that I've done a deal with them, I have a much better idea of how this works. So Essentially, Carvana, I know for a fact, has a dealer's license in Texas, and I know for a fact that they have a dealer's license in Georgia, and I'm sure they have dealer's licenses in other states, and it depends on the regulations of the states about how they decide where they're going to get their dealer's license. So it's easier to get a dealer's license in Georgia than it is in Virginia, so they decided to make Georgia the hub. So they go and they buy cars pretty much everywhere, and then they take them to their lot in Georgia, and then they have satellite uh, facilities where they do not hold cars. They only do processing on the cars at the satellite facility. And out of the actual delivery guy's mouth, 
no car is even allowed to stay at the facility here in Virginia uh, unless it is being sold like the next day. So essentially what you're getting is, if you live in Virginia, for instance, is you're buying a car from a Georgia dealer that is being exported to your state. Or if you already live in Georgia, then you're just buying it from a Georgia dealer. Um, there's a problem with that though. So because they can't hold the car in the lot here in Virginia, they have to take it in in the morning and deliver it that evening. Um, because of that, what happened is, is everything got really, really delayed because it came from the truck was owned in Florida, then bought by Carvana and brought to their lot in Georgia then sold to me in Virginia. So then they had to transport it from Georgia to Virginia. Then because Virginia, you're supposed to put an inspection sticker on everything. They don't technically have to because they're not a Virginia dealer, but they do it as like a courtesy. They have like four different inspection stations around Richmond that they use to do this. They bring it to the inspection station. They've overloaded an inspection station with way too many vehicles. So everything is just backed up. Um, and the delivery was already supposed to happen at six. Um, they offered to deliver it like at noon or three o'clock. Um, but we decided to just have it delivered at six. Thank God. Because even though it was supposed to be delivered at six, it showed up the morning of the delivery. And by the time everything was said and done, he was two hours late. Um, he was there at almost eight o'clock before he finally delivered this thing, which I'm not pleased with. Um, punctuality is important uh, to me, especially when you're talking about a pretty large purchase like this. Um, so I wasn't real happy with that. And I expect that that's probably very often the case. Uh, it doesn't seem like this could possibly be an outside uh, event, like a an abnormal event, just judging by the logistics of how this works. Is there a better way for them to do it? Uh, legally speaking, probably not, unless they just obtain a dealer's license here in Virginia and can hold the vehicles here for a whole day. Now, my final complaint about this is the 150 point inspection, which this is a big one, guys, because here's the thing. I don't really care about their 150 point inspection because I'm in a truck that has a factory warranty. So if anything's wrong with it, it goes to the GM dealership and they fix it. I don't care. But also, if you're going to advertise a 150 point inspection, people expect you to have done 150 point inspection as a professional in the automotive industry, I know that this truck could not have passed 150 point inspection, but I also know they wouldn't have had to pay anything to, to repair it. So, cause it's under warranty. So I don't know why they would have marketed it when it wasn't really ready for sale. And this scares me because there are some cars on their site that are not under a factory warranty and they're saying that they 150 point inspected those. So like I said, if you're buying a car that's less than five years old and has less than 60,000 miles, significantly less, um, then you probably don't care, right? Any mechanical issue, you just bring it to the dealer and they'll fix it. And like, I mean, it's annoying, but whatever. But if you're buying a car, like they have some 2011, 2012 ca cars up there. Um, I seen, I think I saw one as old as like 2008 one day, but I might be wrong about that. But I think there was like a 08 or 09 that they had for sale. That's way out of warranty. And, you know, you're expecting them to do a 150 point inspection and it doesn't seem like they did. And here's the problems that I found just since uh, I've had it. So number one, um, the transmission seems to be not shifting quite perfect here. Um, now, Basically what happens is when I pull out out of my driveway, the road that my driveway comes out on is a 55 mile an hour road. So you get to kind of go from zero to 55, you know, it's a pretty good jump. So when I take off to go down that road, the first to second gear shift, it kind of jumps into a neutral and we'll just go, it'll just rev way up and then it'll catch second and go. Um, that seems like maybe something you could miss in a 150 point inspection. It doesn't have a check engine light or anything like that. 
Um, but I would think that a vigorous road test should be a part of any 150 point inspection. I mean, 150 points driving. It wasn't one of them. I, I don't know, but I will admit when we test drove it before we took it from the truck, he, uh, pretty much, um, we didn't get to go that fast. Uh, we just, we don't want to leave the guy standing around for an hour waiting for us to test drive this thing at, at eight o'clock at night. So there's the one thing right there. Um, and the, uh, the other glaring thing that, uh, I found is the rear pinion seal seems to be leaking. Um, not enough to like leave a spot on the ground, but the whole front of the differential is just covered in oil. Um, so yeah, that's not good. Um, and the exhaust resonator. So there's a muffler and then there's a resonator, mid pipe resonator, uh, has some rust forming on the case of it. All of that stuff is covered under warranty. Uh, the transmission and the pinion seal would be under the powertrain warranty, which is five years, 60,000 miles. So I still got some time on that. And the exhaust would be under the corrosion warranty, which is like way bigger. It's like a seven year corrosion warranty, I think. Something like seven year, 100,000, something like that. So all of this stuff is covered under GM's warranty, but I'm going to caution you guys, if you are buying a car from this company that is out of warranty, not to trust their 150 point inspection. Now, if this was not under warranty, I wouldn't have even let them take it off the truck. I would have said, nope, just take it back with you because I'm not paying to fix this stuff. But because it's covered under warranty, I figured, you know, let me find some bigger stuff that maybe won't be covered uh, before I just go ahead and say no on that. Um, so basically, I don't know, like, I'm a, I'm a little bit on the fence, honestly, about giving this truck back because of those issues. Um, on one hand, I don't want the downtime. It's not going to be anything out of my pocket because it's covered under warranty, but God knows how long it's going to take before I get the thing back uh, for them fixing it and making a payment on a truck that I just got and I'm already getting stuff fixed, like big stuff. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, but on the other hand, I don't know... If I exchange it for another truck, one, I haven't seen any that fit my needs other than this one, even at local dealerships. And the ones that are like similar to this at local dealerships are always thousands of dollars more. So I'm kind of stuck behind between a rock and a hard place. Like I said, if this thing did not have a factory warranty, it wouldn't have even made it off the truck. I would have just not even bothered. But because I kind of know I can get it fixed for free anyway, I'm kind of like, eh, maybe I already have it. It's just easier. But yeah, definitely keep an eye out for the warranties and the miles and stuff like that because the 150 point uh, inspection that they do isn't worth the paper it's written on, honest to God. Um, if you get it for a seven day test drive, maybe pay a, a really good shop to, to look it over. And I'm not talking about like one of these guys that just, you know, whatever. I mean, there are good shops and there are bad shops. You probably want to try and pick one that you got some rapport with. Um, and even then, sometimes it doesn't work good. I mean, I have the best rapport with myself, so I always know what I'm looking for. But, like, for instance, uh, I bought a truck from a guy that was junking it because a shop told him it had a bad transmission. And it didn't even have a bad transmission. It just needed fluid. And I drove that truck for a 1,000 miles. And then I sold it for a pretty good profit. So, you know, like, stuff like that does happen with shops. And I've had some shops that looked at a car that clearly had bad struts, like completely blown out struts and didn't mention it and had a, you know, I seen a guy tell some, you know, pass somebody for a state inspection with a broken belt in their tire. You know, you couldn't drive the thing down the road without it shaking you into the ditch. So, you know, I feel like that might be what's happening with these 150 point inspections. Like there, there's some subjectivity. Maybe the guy that does it gets paid per inspection. He's just trying to pump these things out. He doesn't care if something needs to be fixed. He just wants to get paid. Um, that could be what's happening here. Maybe he's not that experienced. I, I don't know who is doing these 150 point inspections for Carvana, but they need to step it up because this, at least the pinion seal, that that's major, man. That's obvious. So, uh, 
that's kind of like my point of view on it. I Like I said, I don't know if I even am going to keep it because I'm kind of like, uh, you know, like this stuff. I don't know if I want the downtime on it. Um, so I figured I'd make a video now and tell you my experience. And if I end up exchanging it for another truck, I'll let you know what happens then. If I end up keeping it, I'll let you know what I think of it uh, over the long term. And I'll make a, a bigger video about this truck in particular. Um, and yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe for more. I'll catch everybody in the next.